Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, welcome back to the Ansible Day stuff here at OpenStack Summit. I've been announcing other people all day. Now I get to announce myself and my friend Monty hey. Taylor. How you uh, doing? And we were talking about Ansible community things and yeah. modules, and uh, it's all typed out there. Look at that. We even have a we even have a who we are slide. Who are we? I don't know. That is. That is a deep and troubling question of yes. which there are really no answers that will be satisfying. Um, so you're Monty yeah. Taylor. I'm Monty Taylor. Hi, how you doing? Um, uh, I, I work on the open, I work, for, I work for this company called Red Hat. Uh, you may or may not have heard of them, something, something Linux, I guess, uh, or, or whatever. Um, uh, I, more specifically or, or importantly to, to today's chat, uh, I uh, work in the OpenStack Infra um, core team, where we run all of the developer infrastructure for OpenStack, which has turned us into some of the world's largest OpenStack consumers, um, because we run all of that on top of many OpenStack public clouds. By the way, there's a bunch of OpenStack public clouds, in case anybody has been telling you to the contrary, they're lying. Uh, they're just pissed off that like there isn't a single billion dollar public cloud in the United States. That's their definition of no public clouds. Um, uh, I, would, I would argue that if there had been one of those, that would have been an abject failure of OpenStack because there being a collection of different vendors running different public clouds is a wonderful outcome. That will be my soapbox on that particular topic. In any case, we consume them, uh, which has turned us into uh, uh, skilled users of the OpenStack API, uh, which we've funneled also into the OpenStack modules for, for consuming things in Ansible, which is why we'll chat about those today. I'm Mordred on IRC and Freenode. Uh, I'm Emonti on Twitter, if you prefer those sorts of things. Um, and that's that. And I heard you're on the technical committee or something, too. Uh, I'm also too. on the technical committee. I don't know that that's really relevant in here. I mean, you know, I may, I've been on the board. I, you know, may have been around OpenSec for an extremely long period of time. Right. I may be dying of old age inside of OpenStack. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no. That's okay. not, no. Yeah. No. This is my old age face. So I'm Robin Bergeron. I'm the Ansible Community Architect. Architect. It's okay. Uh, I do stuff in Ansible land. Uh, I often work with other open source communities because it turns out we all work very well together. We do. Uh, before this, I worked on this thing called the Fedora project and I was in charge. Yeah. Anybody heard of Fedora? Like, is that a thing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you is. go. Yeah. Would you like to tell the little story about the thing you dug up the other day on the internet? Oh, yeah. It's actually really fun. This is, this is fun. So uh, we're having a conversation about, about communities working together and whatnot, and the, the topic of the, the OpenStack announcement at OSCON in 2010 came up, um, at which Rob was like, oh, yeah, no, well, you know, several of us from Fedora you know, jumped into IRC and had a, had a conversation with, with folks. And I was like, well, our IRC channels have been logged since that day. our inception. So we still have the logs for that. I, I wonder who you talk to. So, so Robin's in my first interaction, Woo! 2010 on IRC in the logs. There's the benefits of many years before we really actually knew who each other were. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had, a, and it's, it was a very, it was a very you know, jovial and, and, and fun. And you we know, probably like, stayed okay. on topic. Yeah, no, this, it was great. Like, it was a great like conversation right about, hey, there's this thing going on. It's quite yeah. fun. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Flavia. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we may or may not get off of the introducing ourselves slides by the end of the talk. Um, probably not. Uh, so, real, real brief uh, thing that I like to, to point out. Um, uh, this, uh, uh, this is uh, there's a part of this is not may not be fully true. Uh, I mean, this talk is free software. Uh, it's written for a piece of software called uh, Presenti, which is a console um, uh, presentation software that uh, takes input in uh, restructured text files, similar to Sphinx, which does documentation for Python. Um, this file is currently sitting in the shade source tree, uh, as is another talk that I gave this morning, which. Uh, amusingly enough, if you put the, the talk uh, content in an Ansible or in a Sphinx documentation thing, it also renders very nicely as, as Sphinx documentation. So sort of playing with this idea. I, I want to go bug uh, Toshio uh, to see about putting this into the Ansible source tree rather than the shade source tree, okay. because the same thing should apply there as well. Uh, and it would kind of be neat. But in any case, uh, you're, you're free to poke at things where this actually lives is subject to change pending uh, where I can stick it. So, so since I'm the, yeah. guess, the the Ansible person here, although you technically work on Ansible, I mean, we're, we're wearing matching shirts. That never Look happens. At this, this, it's almost never that I that I wear corporate livery advertising a thing that I'm actually well, it's, it's, talking about. It's community. Stuff. I, mean, I suppose so, I am also wearing anyway. an HP logo, so it's you know one uh, an old HP logo of the HP that isn't with us anymore. So. 
Ansible, uh, some people remember to call it an orchestration tool, and that's yeah. generally its actual purpose. That's how we often describe it. Uh, some people will more oftenly refer to it as it's a configuration management tool, like Puppet or Chef yeah. or Salt or yeah. CF Engine, yeah. or you can keep going down that. Yeah. Um, and lots yeah. of people will just see, say, I use that to deploy applications and stuff, which Ansible can do a lot of things. Um, and so whatever you'd like to call it, so long as it's um, pleasant and happy, and even if you're angry, I'd like to hear about it. Um, but it does lots of stuff. Super powerful. It's kind of awesome. I'm pressing the Yeah, do it. Uh, I like to call it automation for everyone, including like actual humans, like myself. Yeah, I was humans. A, I was a sysadmin for many, many, many years, and then I stopped, and I had children, and then somehow segued into community management stuff. I'm sure there's not any tie back there uh, that, that works well. But um, turns out Ansible makes a lot of people feel really happy, and it made me feel very happy that I could still do sysadmin -y things yeah. after being away for so long. Um, turns out it works out pretty well in OpenStack. I read, yep. who, who reads the user survey? Who's aware that there's a user survey? <laughs> Who's a user and does not know that there's a user survey? Because you should definitely fill it out. It's really important information for the whole entire community. Anyways, uh, it turns out 45% of people who use OpenStack or yeah, yeah. operate OpenStack uh, use Ansible, Ansible not, a, not just for deployment, because uh, I know that's where most people start getting wrapped around the axle, but turns out you can actually consume things or manage things once they've been deployed, no matter what you deployed it with. Dear God, are you saying you can use Ansible to interact with things over an API? That's crazy. That's crazy, crazy talk, I tell you. And not just for OpenStack. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just for I don't really want to talk a about place that where it's stuff, doing but, yeah. awesome. Uh, networking equipment, yep. uh, containers. Uh, here, containers are popular, right? Is that, mm -hmm. a, is that a thing? Yeah. 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 Uh, there's other public clouds I've sure. heard about. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Not I mean, that billion dollar thing. You're whatever. Whatever. Um, and Windows. You can use Ansible with yeah. Windows. You can do stuff with Linux. Uh, there's a, a module for what's that word? System. Anyway. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know when to use that. And there's one of my even times. insane people who use it to do things in other configuration management systems. Oh, hi. How hey, you what doing? did you work on? Yeah. So, so we in in infra land, uh, we've we've been puppet users for for several years, uh, and we don't have to go into the ins and outs of that. Uh, you. We probably have similar uh, similar sets of uh, uh, emotions uh, <laughs> in, in, in relation to that, um, but there's there's some things in our world um, where the eventual consistency model of our infrastructure would sort of converge on a state at some point. Uh, didn't really work out for us because we needed because it's our life it happened this way. Uh, there were there were sequences of machines that we needed to do in order. Um, this is this is not really the way that the world is modeled. Um, with with that system, so we wrote an Ansible module, which uh, has been upstreamed, and we're the fine caretakers of now, uh, which allows you to correctly uh, run uh, Puppet in uh, both agent and uh, agentless modes. Uh, and, which and, and we, we use this in production. It turns out. And it turns um, out you don't have to go and rewrite things if you want to find great. a new tool. We but had a lot of Puppet. We we didn't want to rewrite might it. Might like for it to magically have been rewritten by somebody else, but we don't actually want to spend the effort to rewrite it because it's doing its thing. So uh, I was very. It was one of my er, the earliest uh, excitements with Ansible was. Oh wow! I can use this to improve the thing that I have today without deleting the thing that I have today, which is. Not always how new technologies are introduced into the ecosystem. So yay, go Ansible. Good job, guys. Well, and good job you. Um, because the way we met, mm -hmm. except for that first time and, uh, and, and the second that. time when yeah, I, I met you about CI yeah. stuff, um, was through Ansible yep. uh, because I heard that you guys were doing kind of awesome stuff. Uh, turns out there's a lot of people who are doing awesome stuff. Uh, 2,665 contributors, although that was this morning. Yeah. And more importantly, I was like, wow, that is so, 2,988 stars on GitHub, that was this morning. So we might already be over 23,000, but I'm pretty sure there's a couple people in this room who could just start, right? Like, we could make it happen <laughs> now, and someone could tweet about it. Not to shill for, for clicks or anything like that. Well, but you know, we can debate the relative importance of, of stars. Yeah, like, I'm not, I'm not, not actually convinced, but you know, 23,000 yeah. sounds kind of impressive, so. Uh, Anyways, there's people who have written like 11,000 plus roles in Galaxy to do actual things. Yeah. But the nice thing about Ansible is that it was written in a modular fashion, right? So there's like this engine, 
And if you're really into Python and you really yeah. want to hang out with Brian Coca and Toshio yeah. and Jimmy C and all the guys and the girls who work on the thing, you can do that. But if you just want to make sure that something you care about is able to talk to Ansible and there isn't already a module written, which there might actually be. I mean, there's a Honey Badger module. There's some piece of software out there called Honey Badger, and they have written a module so that you can control aspects of Honey Badger using Ansible. The problem is, is that I think I would be in violation of the code of conduct for to say the, the next the thing, logical right. sentence. So, um, in just, your in your imaginations, uh, but yes. there are now hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of modules, including yep. for all those things that I covered on the last slide. But the important thing is that we have figured out that we at Ansible, like Ansible Inc. or now Ansible by Red Hat or whatever, you know, yeah, we at Red Hat who work on Ansible uh, can't really be experts in these hundreds and hundreds of things, right? Like there's, how many, how many OpenStack there's modules so are many, there? Like, there's, I was like you know, 30 or 40 there, just OpenStack modules. There are so modules. many areas yeah. where we could be experts, but it's just not feasible, which is why we've empowered contributors to work, I might contribute know something modules. About OpenStack. And frankly, they're the people who have worked in anger and happiness and delight on these things and know way more about all of those emotions. OpenStack. <laughs> Uh, and the, the, the many qualities that the public clouds may or may not have on any given day. Oh, yeah. Um, which means oh, well. this is why you guys have done an awesome job making Ansible be useful and usable by the 45% of folks who right. now use it. I'll tell you all about that. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that, was, that was your. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And this is, this, is a, uh, this is where I subtly hand it off to oh, you. Yeah. And then I'll hang uh, out over here so, uh, and I, hit you if you, uh, you know, veer off into a random direction. Just. Just on the off chance that we have some folks in the room who haven't done anything with Ansible, um, I, I thought I'd, I'd real briefly, because I'm going to say some words. Who's, who has not used Ansible? All right, so we have some people in the All great. right. So this is, this is not a waste of a time. Yay, you uh, will get a so, lot out of this. Um, so well, there's, some, there's some words uh, that, that happen in, in Ansible and that mean things. Um, uh, and and these, are, these are some that, that are, are somewhat relevant for, uh, for the, the rest of the thing. Um, uh, we'll, you'll, you'll hear us talk about the OpenStack Ansible modules. Those are, those are Python code that actually live in the Ansible tree um, that ultimately wound up getting copied over to the machine on, in question where you're going to run some, some tasks. Uh, but they're, they're Python code that, that can be used in, in, in tasks in, in Ansible. Um, uh, roles, on the other hand, are, are collections of, of, of YAML files with sets of tasks that they're describing. So like a role will, will be like, hey, here's the 20 tasks that, that I, uh, I I, uh, I made up of. Um, a, a play is a, an as association with one or more tasks and one or, one or more roles uh, with some amount of hosts, right? So like you've got some tasks, but they're in a role, they're, they're, they're just things to run. They're not a, a description of where to run them. A play is, is, is combining those two topics. And then a playbook is a collection of plays um, and is usually a YAML file. So a YAML file can be a, a a playbook can be a YAML file with one play in it, or more than one play, uh, and things would get broken up into additional plays if, if you have different sets of hosts that you want to run them on. In terms of using Ansible modules, uh, the, the different hosts that you're going to run things on, not so much of a, of a big important part of the, of the thing. Running your workload after you've, you've interacted with the OpenStack API is pretty much uh, so much, but you're probably going to run your API calls from probably like local host or something like that. I'll talk about them in a second. So there's these modules, right? So I talked about them. We're not really talking about the other things. It's mostly about the, the the modules, the things that are the upstream support in Ansible for interacting with the OpenStack APIs. Um, so these are not modules to deploy OpenStack. You could use some of these in a deployment. Some of them do things that would be admin type tasks that you would do as part of a deployment uh, operation, but. Uh, in general, so there's a there. You go to the, the the docs page. There's a there's an open stack section. It's got them all listed there. Um, uh, they're they're focused on consuming the APIs, uh, and and we have a mix of of end user focused and and deployer focused uh, things. Um, they they work on all of the open stack clouds that I have been able to get my hands on, um, and just because there is a collection of rack space modules also in the cloud section of the Ansible documentation. Don't let that fool you. These work on the on the Rackspace cloud very well. We use them all the time. Uh, so you you have I guess if you're Rackspace users, you have a choice of two sets of modules that, that you can use. Um, uh, but there is there is no need to be like oh well I need to use a different modules for that one OpenStack cloud over there and 
the OpenStack modules for the others. So um, that's just a side note. Um, I'll, we try and do a lot of work to work around deployer differences. So OpenStack has some really great uh, qualities um, for our deployer ecosystem uh, in that we allow lots of configurability, uh, lots of different ways that you can deploy OpenStack, and that's fantastic. And in some places, we maybe haven't done the best job that we could have in not leaking those choices out through the API. Uh, so as a consumer, uh, it might get confusing. Um, this actually doesn't come up as much for the folks in the, de I mean, the deployer folks has to worry about configuring it, but like a deployer working on a cloud, uh, well, they know what their cloud is, so they, they know what their choices were that they made as the deployer. It's not as much of a, not really, <laughs> hopefully, I really hope that they know what they're, like, wow, we have Keystone V3? How strange. Um, uh, so that's the thing, but, but in, in for, uh, for the large majority of the, uh, of the user-facing modules that we have for, uh, for OpenStack, we, we try and hide as many of the deployer differences as we can and present a, a common, uh, reliable interface so that you could write uh, playbooks that maybe do something over multiple clouds all at the same time, right? Like, that, that would be maybe a thing you might want to do from time to time, and it would be great if you could just have one playbook that worked on all of your clouds and not uh, 20 playbooks that, uh, that you have to decide which are which. Um, there are some bugs that'll come in, uh, and, and we'd, we go out of our way. Like, we work around some crazy, weird things that really aren't even okay choices for a deployer to make, and we work around them anyway. We have gotten a couple bugs. Uh, it's worth pointing out, because I want, if you have bugs, if you have problems, please bring them in. We want to fix them. Uh, occasionally, someone will go too far, because uh, that happens. You have to have barriers and, and boundaries in life. Um, uh, recently, we, had, we got a bug, and I felt really bad for the, the person in question, because it wasn't his fault. Like it was, He was consuming an OpenStack cloud from somebody, and he's like, these don't work on their cloud. And I was like, well, that's because they've redefined the API um, and completely <laughs> changed the semantics of some <laughs> fundamental terms. So no, I'm not going to work. We can't do They're that. That really would break the Ansible modules if we were to put that. It would break it for all of the rest of the users. So I'm sorry, you should go have a nice, you know, respectful conversation with your cloud provider and be like, yo, this is making it really hard to consume uh, a tool that the, a large amount of the value add is supposed to be <laughs> the lack of vendor lock-in, so. I have a um, question. Yes. When you say we, you're talking about OpenStack Infra. No, uh, well, sort of. Um, so, and I'll, I'll get to a part of that. So the Ansible modules themselves, there's, what, Ricky, like four, five of us that are, uh, that are that are core of them, but like in terms of people who are like actually active and touching them every day, it's depending on the day. Sometimes me, sometimes Ricky, uh, Shrews and uh, and Julia and there's one other person are have a bunch of things they're busy with, right? And like so, it's you still like them to be core reviewers on those, but you know like they've, they've got Keating. other things in there. Uh, Jesse Keating. Uh, everyone should always have Jesse Keating as a as a core reviewer and everything they're doing. It's a, he's a great. Uh, reviewer to have on, on things. Um, uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's us. On the flip side, there's a library that we'll talk about in a second um, that a lot of th these are based on um, that is uh, uh, run as an OpenStack project. All of the OpenStack Infra team are, are core on, on that. Um, and so anyway, yeah, there's, there's some people. Um, uh, we're always looking for more. Uh, there, will be a, there will be a call out for that. Actually, no, I think I accidentally just deleted that. Well, I, I was actually um, meaning like we as in we, we, you guys abuse the crap out of all these public clouds. Oh yeah, 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 but yeah. Go on. Yeah, um, I, I have, I have accounts on pretty much every OpenStack public cloud in existence. So, so most of the time, I can just go actually reproduce a problem somewhere. Um, but, uh, but you know, people have private clouds, and like, I, you know, we're. It's always a, a, a fun experiment to figure out how to get the information from somebody about what their private cloud is doing uh, when it's a private cloud behind somebody's firewall. So anyway, uh, if, if, we, if we find ourselves in that relationship at some point in the future, uh, I will do my best. Um, but you know, it, it may, may not work the first time, because uh, it may not know what to ask. Uh, anyway, so uh, as, as a, you actually yep. gave me a great segue, thank you. Um, so this is all based on the, on the Shade Library. Um, uh, which is a, an OpenStack library that, that started in its life in the Infra project. Uh, its job in life is to abstract the deployer differences. Uh, I gave a talk on it this morning uh, with some examples that went over by 20 minutes because I don't know how to shut my mouth. Uh, so sorry to any of you who might have been in there about the timing of that. Uh, there's also another talk on 
on, this morning was just like examples of how to use it. Uh, tomorrow there's a talk on uh, kind of more like architecture, like what, why, you know, that kind of kind of thing. So there's talk about that tomorrow. Um, it's uh, so it tries to make those go away. It's designed for multi-cloud. Uh, when we started writing the code that eventually became Shade, we had two, three, at least two. I can't remember if we were to three or not. I think just two uh, when we started it. But turns out two is enough. <laughs> two is two is plenty. You have to you have to learn a lot of things to deal with two. Um, uh, and so uh, so we 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 found a lot of logic uh, that we had to do to deal with that. Um, in our node pool project, which is the thing that we use. Um, it's different than the one from the keynote this morning, different projects. Uh, not eBay's uh, node pool, but uh, our node pool, uh, which makes all the build servers for the OpenZAC uh, CI system, um, which, uh, you know, hits around 20,000 servers a day. Uh, so it's, it's, it's pretty good at scale, I guess, you know, that those numbers are, are you know, decent, uh, whatnot. So it's pretty good at massive scale. Uh, hopefully it's simple to use. Um, uh, and, and then we, we basically, as we started working on the Ansible modules, we're like, wow, we've got this exact same logic in two places, that's stupid, let's make a library. Um, uh, it's kinda, kinda how that happened. So the, the combination of Ansible and uh, Infra is, is actually where Shade came from in the first place. So, um, so that's a thing. Uh, it's worth pointing out uh, that we, we, uh, we test every Shade patch in the OpenStack CI system against a collection of differently configured OpenStack clouds. Um, uh, as we can't get all of the configurations that exist out in the, in the world, because there's some things that are just really hard to express in a, in a local deployment. But we have, we have several divergent cloud configurations that we spin up and create a cloud and then do uh, shades testing against that. Um, we also have a, uh, a set of, of test roles in the shade repository that on every shade patch, we at least make sure that we don't break the existing Ansible modules um, uh, and, and test that those still work. So that, that sort of part of the thing is there. Um, uh, we're, we're hoping in the not too distant future to, the, the hole in this testing is that changes to the Ansible modules uh, aren't tested um, in, the, in, the, in the OpenStack CI system until they've landed. Um, uh, which is possibly not the first time that you would like to test them. Um, uh, so th there, there's a bit of a hole in our test coverage there that we, we're... But as soon as we have the same thing that you have for... for that's that's kind of, we'll yeah, there's, to... there's magic, magic coming in the, in the future lands of Zool and uh, that, we'll, that we will all subjugate ourselves to and it will be, it will be glorious. glorious. Um, yeah. So, uh, so that's the thing. So, um, real quick, uh, uh, I wanted to, um, uh, why did I, I, I'm not sure that bullet list is actually even correct. I, I think I've, I've reorganized the deck since writing this, uh, this segue slide. So, uh, so yeah, let's, let's assume that, that at one point in time, I had a, I had a, a logical structure in, in mind um, <laughs> that I was going to walk you through. And, and since that point in time, I've changed my mind. Uh, and have not updated the the intro slide to the to the thing. So let's see how bad uh, how bad that is. Uh, yep, it's in the wrong order. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, so there's there's um, uh, the, the, a few things that are that are useful to know in terms of net. So there's a bunch of I don't know uh, I didn't count, but I'm, I think yeah 30 40. There's a bunch of modules. Um, there they all start with OS underscore something right because there's basically a single global namespace of Ansible modules. So OS underscore modules are um, What's that? Sever. There is yes. no there is no sever module, I'll just have you know. Oh yeah, there is. Server. <laughs> <laughs> there should be. <laughs> there should be. Um, so anyway, so the, the end user oriented modules are named for the resource they managed, right? So so OS image, OS server, uh, if I could spell. Um, uh, and, and so forth. So the thing that you're thinking of as a person consuming the API that you would like to have Ansible help you manage, right? Um, uh, things that are oriented more towards operators, not end users, but people running a cloud, um, those actually are named for the service because as an operator, the thing that you're doing is you're managing that service. You know what service you're managing. Um, that part is sort of important to you as, a, as an operator, or it may not be. Uh, this is the taxonomy that we've decided on for naming. So whether it's important to you or not, you're out of luck. Uh, this is how we're naming them. Um, but th this is information that you can sort of infer from uh, from, from that naming. Um, there's some things that could go either way, depending on how the cloud has decided to deploy itself. Uh, in some cloud configurations, end users are empowered to create 
users and groups and, and things of that nature. Um, uh, and in some, that's an admin-only task. Uh, in those cases, we tend to break towards exposing it so that a, an end user of those clouds uh, is, is going to be using modules consistently. Um, uh, and so in this case, the deployer gets stuck with the, the problem of uh, remembering, oh, well, uh, that's also uh, its OS Keystone domain and OS Keystone endpoint, but it's uh, OS user. Um, sorry, deployers, you got the you got the short end of the stick on on this one. Um, uh, if there's more than if there's more than one service that provides a resource, such as security groups or floating IPs, um, this is actually the reason for the naming thing. Um, uh, the code behind it is going to do its best to do the thing the user asked for, which is manage the security group. Uh, the user didn't say, hey, please manipulate the Neutron API to, to, to do a security group for me. They're like, I just want a security group. So uh, this will do its best to figure out uh, what service it needs to do that for. Uh, luckily, there's less and less of this over time, but especially with the NovaNet to Neutron migration, uh, there's several things. And the things that we're pulling out of like Nova proxy APIs, depending on cloud config, there's things that can go either place, and that's not really very friendly to users. So we try our best to, uh, to do the right thing as far as that goes. Um, there is also a, uh, an OpenStack dynamic inventory script in the Ansible repository. Um, um, so uh, for those of you that are, that are a little bit newer to, to Ansible, um, one of the things that you, you, give, to, you, you give into Ansible is, is an inventory, which is these are my hosts. If your hosts are on OpenStack, uh, you don't need to keep a list of them. Um, because OpenStack already has that list of them and it's queryable. Uh, so you can use the OpenStack dynamic inventory script, configure Ansible you know, to point to it, and it'll, uh, it will run the, uh, in, when it needs to get inventory information, it will run the inventory script um, and, uh, and, and use that information as your, as your inventory host list. Um, it, uh, if you have more than one cloud in your configuration, it will treat all of those as one giant magical inventory because that, of course, would be the whole point of you having multiple clouds at your disposal and services deployed across them is that you could treat them all as one collection of, of server resources uh, rather, than, rather than multiple. Um, uh, it, it does, uh, in its default configuration, exclude hosts that do not have uh, uh, IP addresses. Um, uh, this is because Ansible operates by SSHing into, into servers, so if the server doesn't have network connectivity, then it's not a very useful host to be in the inventory. Um, there, are, there are ways, if you are in a situation in which that is not a valid statement for you, uh, there, there are ways to, to tell uh, uh, things to not do that. Uh, but in general, that is the truth for 99% of the people using it. So. Uh, makes a bunch of auto groups, so it'll make, a, it'll make an Ansible group for all the things that share a flavor, all the things that share an image, you know, pretty much any of the things that seemed like they would be a, a sane grouping that people might want to group things by. Um, so AZ, region, cloud, AZ plus region, region plus cloud, cloud you know, the, the things. So there's a bunch of those. Um, also, if you put in a, a groups uh, field in your metadata, it will, um, it will put the server into groups of, of those names um, as well. So it, it does its best to, uh, to do those things for you. Um, uh, also, in, in, the, in the spirit of, of modules and community, uh, look, I'm talking about community things. Um, the, the modules for all of the, all the OpenStack resources are, are very welcome. Um, uh, it's already, they're already separated into little files. It's not like you know, we have to, to be really protective of, oh, I don't know, that's a only quasi-official thing, or uh, they're welcome. Uh, just because they're welcome doesn't mean that I, tomorrow I'm going to set on and write one of them. Uh, so if it's a service that you care about that I sh hasn't, doesn't exist there, it's not that anybody has a, a negative relationship with it. It's just nobody's gotten around to doing that yet. Uh, so please write patches, send in pull requests. They're, they're all welcome. Uh, same goes for features to existing modules. Uh, a lot of times, you know, a lot of times it's just as easy as adding a fa flag to the to the config section of the module and be like, "Oh, I need to pass this flag in." We just actually landed a, one of those this morning. Uh, uh, pretty pretty easy as far as uh, far as that goes. Um, so please, all all of these things are welcome. Upstream um, in. Oh, sorry. Uh, all of these. Well, you're welcome upstream everywhere. The yes. modules, <laughs> the modules is home is is Ansible's uh, GitHub repository. Uh, Shade's home is, is OpenStack's 
uh, OpenStax infrastructure. So um, depending on where you need to make a patch, uh, there, there might be one or two different places, but that's, that's our life in this uh, lovely. I'm just going to casually mention because normally I would be standing over here being yeah. like, hey, you've got like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes or something. Um, yeah. I think we've got like 10 or 15 minutes yeah, or I'm, something. I'm not sure. Great. Yeah. 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 Thanks for. Sweet. That's we're exciting. Gonna, we're, that's, uh, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're doing such a good right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's good. We're, we're, Wahoo. I don't think we're going to go over by a half an hour. I'm, I'm excited. Um, uh, so uh, that said, we're very welcoming. Um, there are times we have to be strict. And so I, I want to just say, uh, yes, please come write patches, review pull requests, all of that is super helpful. Um, the, the, we do try and keep a mind out towards making sure that the modules are gonna work well for everybody. Um, and so, so there's, there's, you know, we might want to bike shed a little bit about the name of a parameter, is that supportable, is that available everywhere, if it's not available, what's the behavior, those sorts of things. Um, if they're going to consume an OpenStack API, by God, they need to use Shake. That is non-negotiable. Um, uh, there are reasons for that. I'm happy to go into them. I won't go into them right now, but that is a, that is a non-negotiable rule for, for the upstream uh, OpenStack API consuming modules. Um, uh, other, there, are, there are, somebody came up with a, an, a great example um, uh, just uh, a, a, about a week or two ago. Uh, there's a fellow writing uh, an, an uh, Ansible module to generate a Tempest config um, for, uh, uh, for, well, for Tempest, to generate Tempest configs. Um, and it's like, do I need to use Shade? And I'm like, well, I mean, no, uh, because that's, you're, you're doing, you're taking some inputs and you're producing a, 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 a config. You absolutely don't have to use Shade for that. But then it turns out there was a, another piece um, that was doing some, some introspection of the uh, extensions uh, that are available for the services in the cloud, and that tipped the answer back over to, uh, well, yeah, for that piece, that's, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna need you to do that. And a lot of this has to do with making sure that we're supporting uh, auth and plugins and all that type stuff consistently across the set of the corpus of modules. We certainly don't want individual modules behaving differently from each other as it, as it relates to connecting to the, to the stuff. So um, uh, vendor difference should be hidden, uh, probably beaten that to death uh, thing, other than operator modules. Like, so uh, it's, it's fine. Uh, to, to expose some of those things because that's actually empowering to, to operators for them to be able to flip flags and it's not, it's not confusing. Uh, or it's not any more confusing than, than anything else is. Um, so uh, all of your cloud information uh, is, is all, uh, all configured in a file called clouds.yaml. Um, uh, this, is, this is where you stick. Uh, so if you got 20 clouds, make a nice long clouds.yaml with all of your account information in it, uh, and you give them all names, uh, and then you refer to those names in your Ansible playbooks, and everything is great. Um, both YAML and YML uh, as suffixes are perfectly acceptable. Uh, the file can be in home directory uh, or system-wide, or actually I should have put this, I was gonna go back and edit the slide and I, I forgot. Uh, it can also be in the current working directory. So if there's a clouds.yaml file in your current working directory, uh, that takes precedence. Um, uh, which is a, a great way to, um, to, to segment some things. If you're like, I'm gonna, I, ooh, I don't really actually wanna <laughs> to really do this on, um, uh, so I've, I actually use that in the examples at the moment um, uh, for a reason. Uh, but, um, but anyway, so you can stick them there. Um, uh, information in, in the local directory wins, home directory wins next, uh, system level uh, Etsy OpenStack uh, uh, comes after that, yes. You have to use clouds.yaml? You, you don't have to use clouds.yaml. Okay. Um, That's what I uh, uh, We'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, uh, the good. full docs for it are, at, um, uh, the, are in the documentation for OS client config. I say the full docs, they're not as full as I want them to be. Uh, that's a to-do list item. There's some things in there that you can, th there are some things you can configure uh, that, um, that are great that may not be as fully explained <laughs> as, uh, as you might like for them to be. Um, uh, but anyway, if you're a person who's running on Mac or Windows, uh, some, some directories are different because of where the right place to put things on different platforms is. Uh, so these are the locations um, that, uh, that files go on, on those locations. There's a, uh, there's a Python uh, library called Apter, I think, uh, that has all of these encoded in it, which is what we use to, to get them. Uh, we try our best to, uh, to do that. Um, just for Ansible, uh, you can also stick a clouds.yaml into Etsy Ansible. Um, so this is for 
folks who were like, I don't really want to stick config files for Ansible anywhere other than Etsy Ansible. Um, I recommend not putting it there. Uh, one of the nice things about the clouds at YAML is a place to stick your cloud configuration, your, your, your cloud client configuration, um, is that other tools use it as well. So Python OpenStack client, the command line client, reads and understands the, the file, like, like the different things do. So th if, you're, if you're consuming OpenStack things, it's possible that sometimes you're gonna use Ansible and sometimes you might use some other tools. So you're, you're probably better served by sticking it in a normal location, but that is there and available to you should that be an important, uh, important thing for you. I, I ran. I'm just like, um, I mean, uh, you one a demo. Like, I know. Yeah, we're going mean, to run demo on live, live public clouds, yes. right? Because that is always a great idea on, on conference Wi Fi. Um, so, uh, an important thing is we see this tripping people up. I've mostly been trying to focus on the stuff you got to know to get up and running with stuff rather than here's how to use an Ansible module. Um, so, Ansible executes code on remote systems. Even if it's local host, it's, there's still this, this construct around that. Um, and the, the, Clouds.yaml file needs to be on the system where, the, on the target system. It, I usually run it like, hey, localhost run this thing because it's an API call. I don't need to shell out to a, another server to run it. But whichever server you're telling it to connect to, even if it's localhost to do it, that's the server that the Clouds.yaml information needs to be on. Um, putting a Clouds.yaml file on your localhost and then saying, hey, go run OpenStack API commands on that remote host, not so much what's going to work, uh, even just a little bit, like not even partially. Um, so uh, so that, that is an important thing to keep in mind. Um, uh, you can also pass your authentication information to all of, as a, as a parameter to the auth parameter to every OpenStack module directly. So you can put auth information straight up in just like some Ansible variables and, and pass it in as a parameter. It's totally a thing you can do. Um, if you need to put other config in your clouds.yaml, you cannot currently directly pass that into modules. There is a, there's a thought floating around that every module takes a, a cloud a, a, a cloud name as a parameter that you can give it, which is referencing the, the piece of configuration in clouds.yaml. Um, the, the, there's a suggestion to allow that to also take a full dictionary, which is the, the, the entire config description for that thing. Um, so we may have a workaround. There have been some folks a little bit frustrated. They can't just keep all of their config and their Ansible variables, and that they've got to keep this other config file. For right now, you have to keep the other config file if you need to use any other uh, config variables. So that's just life. Uh, I apologize. Um, quick examples. Uh, this is uh, this is my this is a snippet from my clouds.yaml uh, for City Cloud. Uh, this is referring to a well-known cloud. So profile City Cloud is saying, hey, the library already knows about a set of clouds and it has some of their their known information in it. Use that one. I'm going to name a cloud called my. So in my Ansible playbooks, I will refer to this this thing as. Uh, as my city cloud, and then there's my auth information. You'll notice there's no password there, um, and that's not just because I omitted it for the slides. Um, uh, you, it's also profane. It's that's also profane, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also, as I can, I can point out that in addition to clouds.yaml, there is the, an optional file called secure.yaml. Um, if, if you want to put secrets into a different file than clouds.yaml, you can. Uh, the values get overlaid, so this would be an example, um, uh, secure.yaml. Uh, uh, my password is not actually eight X's. Um, seven. Uh, uh, just yeah, it's seven X's. Yeah, uh, clearly, um, so that is that is available to you should you should you want to use it. Um, uh, kind of depends on on your environment and whatnot. Uh, additional entries, and so this is this is where we I mentioned that you cannot use you cannot pass all of the config things that you can put into a cloud's YAML. This uh, this you can pass into playbooks directly. So you can just say auth colon, and then stuff. put the stuff. And in fact, clouds.yaml's auth dictionary is designed around all of the Ansible playbooks. That's the reason there's an auth dictionary in clouds.yaml is so that there's a clear delineation of what you pass uh, because we can't do ver uh, parameter validation otherwise in Ansible because the auth dictionary can have variable content based on what your auth plugin is and it's a mess. So, um, so anyway, there's other things like in this one, uh, neither one of these extra settings are needed for Vexos. Vexos is a very nicely uh, behaving cloud. Um, but uh, uh, in this one, I'm, I'm telling in my config that I would prefer to use 
uh, version 3 of the identity API, and I would like to override the endpoint returned by the, the catalog with this endpoint, uh, and, and it, will, it will use those things. So this is additional things you can, you can tell the config that it will, it will honor. Um, if you want to get really crazy, um, uh, InterNAP does this really neat thing where when you, when you spin up an account, uh, you, they create you your own public network and your own private network, and unfortunately Neutron doesn't have a capability for you to figure out which of those is which. Uh, the only way that you can know it is as a human, you look at the names of them, and the one that's named WAN uh, is the public one, and the one that's named LAN is the private one, um, uh, which is fine for humans, right? But it's a little bit harder for this. So we've, we've added some ability to annotate uh, some network information uh, if you need, in most cases, everything can find everything fine. Like this is this is an extreme case uh, that you would need to do this for, and all of these values can be set on a per region basis. If you need to do that, uh, hopefully none of you will need to have complicated clouds.yaml files. Most of the time, it should just work with your authentication information. But it's worth pointing out. I've also included the auth URL for Internet here. Uh, you actually don't need to do that. You could say profile internet and it would fill that information in for you. Um, as it would also fill in floating IP source none. Uh, Shade will figure out what to do with floating IPs, which involves doing some Neutron API introspection. But if you know that the cloud doesn't support floating IPs, we can configure it to say, you know, don't even bother doing the introspection. It's not worth your time. Uh, and there's a few other things like that. We could literally do a couple hours on all of the different ways you can configure things. Um, there's a, a few additional variables you can add into, um, oh, and wow, that, uh, uh, this ter something formatting went terribly wrong with the slide. I apologize. Typing has um, failed. Yeah, <laughs> typing, this, this, this slide sucked. Um, uh, I, typing has definitely failed on this slide. I apologize for that. Um, uh, so there's, there's a, three additional things you can stick into your clouds.yaml that will affect the behavior of the uh, dynamic, dynamic inventory plugin. Um, there are some things that Ansible does, excuse me, that Shade does to fill in additional information uh, around servers. Uh, if you set, ex and it does this by default, if you set expand host bars to false, it will not do those things. Because uh, it's possible that you don't care about them and you don't want the extra API uh, overhead. Um, also, the original behavior was uh, that if any of your clouds in your list had a failure, that the inventory script would fail. Um, we didn't want to break backwards compatibility with that, even though it was like, it seems like a bug, but like maybe that's a thing that, that a person would prefer hard stop if anything is wrong. Um, so you can set fail on errors to, to false, and it will give you as much inventory as it can get from your clouds rather than, than only the, the things. Uh, and also there's a behavior as it relates to what OpenStack Nova does not uh, insist that your host names are unique, uh, the names of your servers. Uh, and so injecting servers into an Ansible inventory then becomes problematic because how do you refer to it in the inventory if there's two servers named foo, right? So the original uh, behavior there, and again, this is a place where we put in a flag because we wanted to change it but not break people's backward compatibility. Uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm literally just going to interject. Oh, just because I know uh, we do this in phone calls. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'm like, yeah. we're so, five minutes we over, are, I think. Sorry. Yeah. And I, I mean, there, there are people who yeah. are coming in, they want to see Paul's OpenStack. Oh, yeah, they should definitely. one yeah. one thing. Yeah, it's absolutely, they <clears> should see that. Um, I will I mean, I know. This. You can read up on, on those things. This, yes. is, this, is a this is an example of testing your clouds.yaml. So if you had that clouds.yaml file, run this playbook. Uh, and, well, I mean, if you had my clouds.yaml file, run this playbook, but this is basically showing iterating over three different cloud entries in a, in a config file, and OS auth is just going to auth and return success. So it's a really great way to verify before you start to figure out why your OS server command isn't, isn't spinning up the server and erroring out make sure that all of your auth config is correct. Because um, <laughs> that's probably 95% of what's going wrong. Um, something is weird there. So this, is a, this loops through for a cloud and, and region of those. Um, a slightly more interesting one is this will spin up a server um, uh, on three different clouds. Uh, it will spin up a, an, an Ubuntu Xenial server uh, on four gig instances on uh, Vexhost, City Cloud, and Internap. Um, uh, and I, I, we're over. I was originally going to show you that live, but, uh, but well, well, I mean, you can just run it while I, people are like walking I, in I, and out. I, they can I, stare I, in a yeah, fascinating it's, way. Well, it's, it's, it's really great uh, to, to run it um, as, um, 
Uh, so if you, if you run that, it sits here, and we're now going to wait for uh, Vexos to, yeah, so any, any questions while we're watching questions. a playbook run? Everybody was enjoying that, watching uh, the playbook run? That it's, was super It's clear. still running. and still doing things, I promise. It's probably more fun than watching us. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's, it's in, a, in a couple seconds here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to print a, a new line that's going to be in a slightly different uh, color, uh, color uh, in sort of a yellowish, uh, yellowish gold color. Uh, Question. Yeah. Question. Come on down to the microphone that's hopefully yeah. on. I think. Hey, look, hey, look, we, we spun up a server. Oh. Isn't that exciting? No, we still get to take a question, though. I don't know if that microphone is actually. Uh, I think it's on. Oh, it is. Oh, exciting. Sweet. Uh, so I, I hope this is not off topic, I guess. But, no, it's uh, probably, it's, all well, topics are on topic. We are all off topic. Comparing from so. a cloud consumer, a cloud user uh, mm -hmm. perspective, um, using Ansible versus using Heat, mm -hmm. or maybe thinking more generically, like Terraform. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, we see articles talking that Terraform is a better tool for that and mm -hmm. things like that. How, what's your vision on it and yeah. on the, so, I mean, the direction that this is going? Yeah, totally. So, so that's actually a really great question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you three. I'm going to try and give you three answers quickly. Um, so the, the first one um, is that. Uh, as it relates to sort of Ansible versus Heat or Ansible and Heat or whatever, uh, there are actually uh, Ansible modules that will, that will run uh, Heat templates for you. So we have support for driving Heat with, with Ansible. And you can, um, do the, you can run Ansible. And you can run heat. Ansible inside of Heat templates too, yeah. So, so you, can, you can tie those things together. Sort of depends on what your workflow is. Um, heat, of course, is, is, exists inside of, of, a, of an individual cloud region. So if what you need to do is orchestrate some resources across multiple clouds, um, heat isn't sitting in a position to be able to do that. So in that case, you could have a heat template, for instance, that you run in each of your clouds, uh, and then use Ansible to make sure that you're running it on, on each of them. Um, you could also do this with Terraform. Uh, Terraform is sort of, some of this also depends on what your, what your larger overall uh, environment is. So if you're, if you're doing more Terraform-y things with your other content other than just spinning up servers, then Terraform would, would uh, be a good choice. There's some, there's some issues that are, that are open stack level issues in that um, Shade has a whole bunch of business logic in it to deal with the different cloud configurations out there. Um, and that's all in a, that's a Python library and Terraform's in Go. Um, and so Terraform at the moment doesn't have a way of consuming that same, those same workarounds. So Terraform's gonna work great on the clouds that it works great on, and it's gonna work poorly on the clouds that it doesn't, which isn't a knock on Terraform. Like, that's our right. fault. But, um, I think but also we, the... we've got efforts, we've, we've identified that in the wider OpenStack community. So ultimately, the long-term goal should be that Terraform should be just as good a tool for you to use if if, you're, if your goal is using Terraform, right? Like if that's, if you like, if you're terraforming things, then I would hate it that you have to ansible a whole bunch of, of, of resources up with the cloud APIs and then terraform on top of them because the Terraform go for cloud driver doesn't work on your cloud. That would, that's a terrible outcome, right? So ultimately the answer should be, it kind of depends on the rest of your, yeah. your ecosystem or whatever. I think whatever. for you guys, you guys wind up being in infra very, 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 very close to these modules because you're yeah. using them to do, 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 do other things as well. All so like day long the, the sort of next over, steps over. In, a, in, a, in walking through a progression of playbook is, hey, look, this, this playbook spun up a server, and then I registered it with my, you know, with my, my inventory in RAM, and then I ran some, some boot up scripts so it's not just to get cloud resources, it's to do things on it with Ansible as well. So like there's, there's steps there, but it's a really good, uh, it's a really good question. Uh, w real quick, uh, I'm gonna. No, no, there's no more real I just want to give two shout outs. Check out Ansible Cloud Launcher, uh, which uh, Ricky um, wrote. It's a role for describing sort of more complex uh, cloud topologies that you might want to spin up I using Ansible. I believe there's going to be a demo of that in uh, the next session. Oh, well, that's great. There's going to be a demo of that in the nice next session. Call. So stick around for the next session that I'm, I'm bleeding over into. Um, and You're not uh, going to continue standing up. Also, here, right? also uh, there's another tool called Lynchpin. Uh, that our friends in CentOS wrote for uh, similar but different reasons. Uh, and it focuses more on, on being able to abstract different clouds. Uh, and they're using that to spin up test environments. But it you know, supports all of the things that Ansible supports, basically, to do that. So those are both things that are worth for sort of further reading and stuff like that. And with that, I'm going to shut up, uh, because I've already taken too much of Paul's time. Well, he doesn't start for five minutes. But oh, wait. well, he wants see, to maybe well, come I, up I, here I, and. I don't see. This is. I. I thought I had to like get off. Somewhere. Well, I mean, technically, it was. Okay, yeah. There's like is. 20 minutes or something um, between them, so that people can walk places and do stuff. What's you that? Don't, do you have a? 
talk in the next hour? I don't know. Um, let's, let's put my phone down there. I know, today's, because, you know, today's makes the, awful. So. The clicking noise. So, um, for you. The, the, the next thing I was going to do after creating the servers, for, for what it's worth, is to uh, run the, the Ansible inventory script to go query all of the clouds to show you that we now have an inventory full of the servers that we just created. Um, because what live demo is, uh, uh, is, is positive without um, that. Also, in follow up things, these are all in the documentation, so go read it. Uh, you'll notice that it's taking a while to run a dynamic inventory uh, against your Ansible, against your OpenStack endpoint because it's querying multiple clouds to find out what all of your servers are. That might not be your preferred choice every time you run an Ansible command to wait the period of time it takes you to run the actual dynamic inventory. So there's also facilities in the, in the, the clouds.yaml file to express some caching uh, information so it'll, you can tell it, cache the inventory for however long, and so it'll, it'll do that. So there's the, you can see this has got, um, uh, so there's my, uh, my Vexos things. These are groups that it created with a bunch of different servers in it, uh, some instances, instances grouped by flavor, and then here's the actual uh, entries. So it does basically the entire, um, uh, the entire all server things. record all goes into open, uh, uh, the Nova server record goes into a variable in the Ansible inventory uh, entry for that host called OpenStack. So if you go, like if you're, if you're doing your Ansible variables, you, you get the entry for the host and then uh, there's, an, there's an OpenStack uh, uh, you know, parameter on that. And inside of that is the entire content of the, uh, of the, of the Nova server because you have access to all of the, all of the metadata that, that Nova knows about a, a particular uh, and server. And now someone's yeah. going to submit a module to remotely Turn off your microphone when it's when yeah, your time's up. That's a good module. Somebody should write that module. That'd be awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I, I mean, I like listening to you talk, but yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, yeah. Paul's uh, being awesome Paul, and giving a talk. Come so. take over. Paul, come. You're, yeah, just you're, you're if I were awesome. you, I would just literally walk yeah. up here and be like, "Dude, get your crap off this table. I'm moving in." Awesome. All right. Uh, is that the end of? I think it's the, good. That's, that's we didn't do bad. Like, yeah, how how often in the weeds were we? Yeah. Just partially. Jim, you'll give us the honest answer. Yeah. <laughs>